a suggestion from uh, Steen Peterson, former national coach of Denmark. And we are, of course, streaming from uh, court number two. We'll do it again tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. can expect the thriller here in uh, in the last match of the day. There's a good chance that this could be a more even match than the ones we've seen so far. Good attack here from Matt Culling. Maybe the smallest guy in the international badminton. <laughs> yeah. Over two meters. Yeah. In height. And when you're that big, you have some some advantages, but you also have some disadvantages. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of the outcome of this match depends how good the Danes are of utilizing the advantages and, and how much pressure the Germans can put on his disadvantages. Excellent play here from Fuchs and Michels. What does it mean to the Danes that they got the victory in, uh, in Holland uh, last week? Probably not that much because it was not a very strong tournament. Um, they've, they've won some matches together, and, and that's of course always nice. But, um, but this is by far the best pairing that they've met so far uh, out of practice. And we are ready for another interview at uh, the mixed zone. And uh, Steen Peterson, watch out. This is the woman that uh, you previously today called the best mixed double player in the, in the world. Marie-Louise Alberts, it's uh, time for you to ask some uh, great questions. Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm, I'm, ready, I'm now ready to do an interview with uh, one of Chinese, this very talented double player and mixed double player. She's called Mi Jin. And Mi Jin, you just won your uh, mixed double match here at Denmark Open and you threw <laughs> to the tournament as well um, and I just want to say welcome to Denmark and then I want to ask you how you think about playing here in Denmark as a Chinese player. Uh, yeah, I feel good, but unfortunately, uh, the, I'm not get used to the weather condition. You can hear my voice and get a little bit uh, funny sound. But I still feel good, the uh, atmosphere and the environment. Okay, and uh, yeah, you won your first match with your partner just five minutes ago. And what went well in this match? Uh, 我觉得这场比赛就正常吧，因为也是今天第一场比赛，反正对后面的比赛可能适应一下，就是就可以了，没有太多的呃说很好的，反正就正常发挥吧。嗯。I think this is just normal match for us, and for it's good for a warm up and get uh, to the good state for the the rest of the matches. Okay, and then uh, just my last question. Um, there's a lot of people having really high expectations for you and how you play and how you do on the court. How do you manage these high expectations? Uh,就是说很多人对你们希望都很高。你们自己感觉会有压力或者是怎么来看待这种挺高的期望。我觉得还是把这个变成动力吧,然后希望很多人就是给我们很多的支持,然后我们也是从中,不管是成功还是失败
to uh, Madien for uh, being a part of this interview. And uh, Steen Pedersen, one point lead for the Germans here at uh, court number two. Uh, what have you seen, do you think? Yeah, um, no, nothing surprising, uh, but uh, a tactical fight to get the game going the way each pair has planned. The Danes trying to attack, trying to uh, eventually get the attack, avoid going into the defense, and, and the Germans trying to avoid lifting too much to the tall Danish players. Mass calling. And we have seen the, the three couples who have won the, the first round matches here at the, in the mixed doubles categories being very uh, very strong and much much better than the opponents. It doesn't seem like we have a match like this right now. Um. No, so far it's been quite even. Um, I think both pairs come really prepared to this match. They've won tournaments the last 14 days. Last week it was uh, Yule and Colling winning in uh, Holland. And the week before that, Fuchs and Michels won a smaller European tournament in, uh, in Bulgaria. So mm -hmm. both pairs are focused. And the players know each other. They they haven't played oh. this match before, but Colin has met folks and Michels and, and Yule has met folks and Michels, so it's not new to them anymore. No, no. <laughs> the German Mich coach is uh, Jakob Hoy. Yeah, been German national coach for I think three years now, and uh, moving on to England to join Kenneth Jonasson. He's going to be in charge of the doubles in England, while Kenneth will take care of the singles. So, yeah, so he knows the Danish players well. And the Danish national coach on the court, Lars Uwe. Coaching Camilo uh, Pereira Yule and uh, Mas Colling. And uh, why, why do you see all the Danish coaches in uh, in the international badminton uh, world? As yeah, so you you mentioned, uh, Kenneth Jonas and in in uh, England, Jakob Hoy in Germany. We have had uh, Klaus Poulsen in uh, in Holland. Um, Lajua, the Danish national coach, has, as far as I remember, been been uh, national coach of Finland. Yeah, but that's that's uh, quite easy. It's because uh, the Danish coaches are are very good, and um, Denmark is uh, the leading nation in, in Europe, and and that means that uh, there's a lot of good coaches that decides to go abroad and and use their expertise. Uh, in other parts of Europe and, and also in other parts of the world, because we also have an Australian uh, national coach that comes from Denmark, it's Lasse Bungard. As we can see here, the Germans are very strong in, in the flat game. Trying to catch the Danes a little bit um, off balance. Oh, yeah, great defense. Oh. Killer from uh, Mess Colling. Great rally for uh, both players. All four players are smiling. Yeah, fantastic rally. Nice to see the follow up from the Danes, but uh, Birgit Michels should also be uh, satisfied because. Uh, 
she survived a lot of uh, attacking strokes from uh, Mass Colling, and if she can continue doing that, insecureness might uh, get into the Danes. Good move by Camilla Ewell there. She was moving towards that part of the net, and probably Michael Fuchs sensed that and tried to place his shot too close to the line. 12 all. Mass calling with the service for Michael Fuchs. Flicker. Good return by Fuchs. Ready for it. Service over. 13 12. Michael Fuchs, probably the most improved German player during the last two years. Well, they, yep. they had a really good Olympic tournament, progressing to the second round, or actually to the knockout stage by beating two strong European pairs. Danes have a bit of momentum at the moment. Yeah. Winni winning four out of the last five points. Yeah, in front for the first time since 2 1. Rita Ewell and Colling. Good oh. service. Yeah. And ready on the first three. It's important, uh, always. Very, very important, yeah. especially in this game. Germans are not going to lift unless they have to. 12 10 for Germany. There's now 15 13 for Denmark. Oh, 16 13 now. Momentum for the Danes, as you said, Stain. Turn from Michael Fuchs. Yeah. But that two point lead could be crucial for the Danes. The way I see it, they have an easier job of scoring quick points than the Germans. Oh! Nice deceptive. Good. Yeah. Service return from Camilla Yul. Sudkat Sarli from Thailand, also on to the next round, beating Rasmus Bundeline Kjærsvæld from Denmark in two close sets. Oh! Excellent play by Max yeah. Carling here. Playing some soft touch. Strokes from below the net.
opening the court for Fuchs. Yeah, and that's what the Germans are looking to do to the Danes, move them and be faster and quicker. After the interval, and uh, they kept their composure for the remainder of the game, and going up one game ahead. I think the Germans were a little bit unsharp in the service situation after the interval. Danes managed to take control of the rally. <coughs> It'll be interesting to see the beginning here of the second game. Danes continue their good run, or have the Germans found a, a way to prevent them from dominating the rallies. Excellent smash here from uh, Michael Fuchs. To the left hand side of Camilla Yule.
that's one of the keys for the Germans to make good service returns. I think she's making uh, some easy mistakes. She seems a little bit uncertain, has difficulties serving to especially uh, Mass Culling. Nice shot here. So. is a bit un uncertain and unsecure on what shot she should go for and another good return excellent excellent move from Camille you were there German players, especially Birgit Michels, it doesn't seem like she believes that they can win this match. Oh, it seems like she is just quitting a bit. That was lucky. From the German players. Totally outplayed Michael Fuchs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What kind of smash was that? Alternative. Yeah, Mas Colling broke a string in his racket yeah. early on in the rally, but still the Germans have trouble killing it. take uh, the last question for today it's from uh, Morten Sode he is asking um, when a player gets a new partner how do the ranking change are the ranking ranking fixed to the couple or to the players thing uh, the ranking is um, mainly fixed to the to the couple and uh, as as a new pair you don't have any rankings you need to play at least two tournaments to get a ranking but for selecting if you can go into the main draw or the qualification you're regarded as individual players you, you take half the points you've got in your best pairing putting it together with your partners half points from his or her best pairing and then multiplying it by 0 0.8 so you don't get full credit for the pack uh, for the points you scored so far with other partners 
And that was the last answer to your questions for today. Thank you very much for asking all the questions. We have uh, picked out Brian Ashton from uh, Canada for the best question of the day about the scouting system in Denmark and how uh, the Danish players get into the national uh, national teams in Denmark. Brian, thank you for your question. We'll ship a poster signed by all the stars, among other Lee Chung Wei to you, to, uh, um, to Canada when the tournament is over on Sunday. Thank you to all of you who have been asking uh, the good questions. Tomorrow we are taking this up once again. Tomorrow we are uh, honoring best question once again with a signed poster but also a shirt from uh, Yonex. So uh, don't hesitate already now to ask us your questions for tomorrow's live coverage here at uh, Yonex Denmark Open. Thank you very much all of you who have asked us questions on our email today. Yeah. And, and suddenly the Germans got a bit of faith back here. They've been playing some excellent rallies and we can see that uh, coach Jakob Hoy is cheering them on from his chair behind the court. Uh, I must admit uh, I'm a bit impressed by Michael Fuchs. He's been playing brilliantly here. He's developed a great touch, able to play the net, able to play the front court from difficult positions. A bit lucky, maybe from uh, Mitchells on that one. Oh. And we see some misunderstandings between uh, the two Danes. Is that because they're a new couple, or what do you think? Yeah, I think. Firstly, mainly because they're a new couple, but also it was a bit lucky that the Germans got that attack back. Um, they hit the frame sometimes and the net and so on. So, but but over it comes and. Um, can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but still they're in a fairly good position, the Danes. And let's see what's happening here after the interval. Three point, three point lead for uh, Fuchs and Mitchells. Fuchs and uh, Mitchells who won Bulgaria International and also reached a corner final at the Olympics. Won the Kako International back in 2011. And uh, Fuchs also became runner-up in the, the European Championships earlier this year. Camilo Rodriguez, the one with the most impressive resume of all the four players. World champion back in 2009. Camilo Rodriguez. And you remember that match, didn't you? <coughs> Don't you? The World Championship. World Championship back in 2009. Yeah, it was fantastic tournament. Um, Quarterfinal, semifinal, and final beat number three, two, and one on the world ranking. So, amazing run in in India for the two Danish players. What does it uh, say to you when uh, when you're looking at Camila Rodriguez? She won the World Championship back in 2009. She came to the knockout stage at uh, the Olympics in 12 uh, in London, and now she starts all over again with a new partner, new, new young partner. It's not even sure that they can make it to 2016 for the new Olympics. Uh, well, what do you think about uh, what the Camila is doing? Yeah, there wasn't really uh, much choice because. Uh, there was nothing more left in, in Thomas Labour and he gave it all and played a good Olympic yeah. tournament. Um, so so she had to start with a, with a younger partner and, and um, she's got a good partner. There's uh, some possibilities in, in uh, Mass. Uh, he has some uh, very strong points and he has some points where he needs to develop uh, still, but, but um, no problem in that. And I also think it says a lot about Camilla and her. She really wants to play mixed doubles and badminton. Because yeah, yeah, she, sure. she's also playing a very good ladies' doubles with uh, Christina Pedersen. So she, she must like it. Definitely, she's 
She's among the top five players in the world, so uh, why stop at something you're, uh, <laughs> you're good at? In top five. At. They're in a bit of trouble here now. Uh, Germans have found a good game plan at the moment and uh, are also a bit lucky on important points. Six point lead now for Fuchs and Mitchells. Yeah, and a poor service return from Mascarling here. Um, praise uh, Birgit Michels for getting herself back in this game. She's got more confidence in uh, covering the shot she's expected to cover in, in the German game plan here. Germans are, are relaxing too much here. I think the Danes could easily take some quick points. Great offense. Very steep smashes from uh, Colling opening the court, and uh, it's, it's, it, it is difficult, isn't it, to to get to get the, the, those deep smashes up, uh, up again and uh, around around Camilla when she's standing in the full court. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. Oh. Three slot oh. points from the Germans and then the Danes are back in it. Two points for the Danes and two points up. And that's one of the, the good things with this Danish pair, that they can easily score points. If you don't play correctly as an opponent, they will score points and they will score points yeah. quick. Oh. Game point for yeah, Fuchs and Mitchells. Michael Fuchs, Birgit Mitchells, 20-16 against Camilla röder Juhl and Mass Colling from Denmark. And they were a bit lucky on the last two ones here.
Second game for uh, Fuchs and Mitchells, 21-17. And uh, Stein, what do you think? What's, what, what has changed? Yeah, the, the German game plan is working right now, and, and uh, Birgit Mitchells has uh, stepped up. I think uh, Michael Fuchs kept the Germans in the game, and, and I don't know if the Danes got a little bit confident or or what happened, but um, they cannot let the Germans control the game. Uh, I think if I were Mass and Camilla, I would try and flick a little bit more to, not because I wanted to flick, but because I I don't want them to put so much pressure on the short services as they do. And then, um, Camilla has to take charge of the net if she's if she's not on top of the net she has to, she have to lift and then they have to to deal with the offense of Michael Fuchs and simply battle for for the initiative in this match and remember that we have this uh, constant uh, content running uh, we have a quiz for a uh, Yonex shirt. So uh, if you know the question to the uh, answer to this question, of course, you have the opportunity to win a shirt from uh, Yonex. Answer to Denmark Open at badminton.dk. Where do we play this year's Yonex Denmark Open? Where do we play Yonex Denmark Open? Answer to Denmark Open at badminton.dk. An exciting uh, third game coming up, I suppose. Yeah, I, I see no reason why it shouldn't be as close as um, as it has been so far. Important is a good start for, uh, for for the Danes. Yeah, I think it's quite important because um, I think if a pair falls a little bit behind here and is not playing close to its best, the points will fall out quickly. And two. Good lift from uh, yeah. Oi. Point lead, uh, staying in perfect start for uh, Mess and Camilla. Yeah. What are they doing? Right, right, actually. Yeah, it's pretty much about getting the initiative. There was the flick. Unfortunately, too long. But a good idea, though. Yeah, I think I think it's important to to take a little bit of the German pressure of the Danish short services. from us calling playing it below net but actually I'd like him to stay quite close to the net because we know that Michael Fuchs is not lifting mm. so one two step forward at least ready to go forward oh! that's really good play yeah 
And he scored that rush to the net, Michael Fox. We have saw we saw it uh, yeah, in, yeah. in the first game yeah. today. We also saw, saw it before. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of uh, former German player Michael Keck, who, uh, who played the same style, very efficient. In fact, so efficient that there's no reason that the Danish mixed double, male mixed double player, shouldn't adapt it. And we, we see that uh, Joachim Fischer is one of those who uh, is doing the same, the rush to the net, yeah. and, and, and likes going forward. Yeah, but, but um, still he's not doing exactly the same because um, he's lifting a bit more uh, Joachim. He has his very, very dangerous smash, but if he, if he protected, th that's actually what Fuchs is doing. He's protecting big admissions. He's not lifting. He's not exposing her to smashes. There he is. And then it goes wrong. Yeah. And that's, that's a good game plan. So everybody should actually adapt that because there's nothing wrong with it. And if, um, but of course you need you need to be able to move really well because he covers a lot of uh, of the court. Again, the three-point lead for the Danes. Yeah. And now it's important that they keep they keep the momentum and just keep pushing. That would be great. Got let it uh, does not let it slip away from them. Oh, great though from uh, oh. Oh, wow, that was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> she had all caught. Yeah, and, and she just returned that defensive shot in a way that's so annoying for the opponent because it seems like she's not going to get it. Mm. And then suddenly she's returned it. So I bet the Danes were a bit relieved seeing that going wide. Five for the Danes. Oh. <laughs> I agree with the <laughs> line judge. Yeah, I do too. We saw Miss Colling try to play these close net shots. He's playing them from quite a bit below the tape, so they're a little bit more risky than uh, Fuchs. Slipping away from the Danes now. Yeah. And it's a one point game again. Oh! And now it's Nine all over. even. Yeah, and now it's the body language of the Danes that are a little bit worrying. Lost three easy points after that drive was called long from hey! Colin. Is over, ten, nine. And it would be uh, very great to have a two point lead at the interval and uh, change of, uh, of sides here. Great effort from uh, Matt Colling down on uh, Michael Fuchs. And two point lead. If you should make a bet now, Steen, uh, what would you do? Don't? No, I don't think I would bet on this match because I think it's a bit too unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Both pairs have had leads and, and, and blown them uh, quite easily. So. 
bit too unpredictable. Of course, it if the odds were right, I'd of course <laughs> take it. But, um, but I don't want to predict the winner of this game here. No. And uh, for tonight, we have been running a small quiz uh, about uh, Yonex shirt, and uh, we have picked the winner for today's quiz. And the winner is from Germany. His name is Philipp Dierkes. He's living in Hörstel in Germany. <coughs> Congratulations to you, Philipp. The question for tonight was, where do we play Yonex Denmark Open? And the right answer is in Odense, in Denmark, in Fynen. Congratulations to you, Philip, and thanks for all the answers we got tonight. Tomorrow we'll be running quiz again, among other things about a Yonex shirt, posters with autographs, and a shirt from uh, Mess Conrad Peterson, who we are going to watch on our court tomorrow night. Thank you, all of you, who has been uh, part of our covering from uh, this tournament today. It has been a pleasure to uh, read all of your emails, answering all of your questions, and uh, staying now. The big question is uh, who got the momentum here? It's quite even. There was a service mistake from Camilla, a return mistake from Mass, and a third shot mistake from uh, Birgit Michel. So it's very, very uh, tense at the moment. What a winner. And they're doing some good stuff. Doing some yeah, and when it's close, it's nice to know that you're able to score these kind of points. So perhaps I'm swinging a little bit towards a Danish win here. Oh, mess. A little late on the yeah, and, uh, a, a little bit too eager sometimes. Um, it seems like he's a bit afraid of lifting at the moment, and he could lift. He shouldn't be afraid of lifting. If he, if he is that, he will give away way too many easy points. Sometimes you get the feeling that you don't get anything in the defense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like here. And that's what creates that feeling. I, I think he wants to do too much to it. Just block it, I mean. Played tight over the net. Mitchells with the service for calling. Yeah, plenty of space in the right side of the German. been like two point lead for Denmark and then back to equalizer two point for Denmark and then equal yeah it is very very tense yeah. the sort of situation and now three point lead for uh, for the Yule and calling Good to make a service fault, but sometimes it's just worse than uh, than others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At 19:20, it's terrible. <laughs> you think? Go for it. Yeah. That's well played by Mascali. Yeah, it is. Big patience in the attack. 
and a good follow-up. Four points to go for the two Danes in a three-point lead against Michael Fox and Birgit Mitchells. If they can win this match, it would be a really good win because the Germans are not easy to beat. Straight down the line. Yeah, but also a flick that is yeah, a bit too short. <laughs> the winner of this match is playing Tuntori Amad and Lilia Lenazia on uh, Thursday. Tough draw for uh, the winner of this match, but uh, hey! also interesting to see either the German or the Danes against the Indonesian to see how they actually stand in this whole premier yeah, and competition. That, that'll be a whole different ball game. Indeed. No. Angles, angles, angles. Service over, 618. He doesn't have to put that much power into the second shot. He can just keep it down. Exactly. Yeah. They've been able to go sort of neck to neck since they were leading 13 11. And, um, and now the match point for Camilla Ruda Jul and Mass Calling from Denmark is against Michael Fuchs Birgit Mitchells from Germany 20 16 in this last match on uh, court number two tonight. The young Danish Mass Calling and the former world champion Camilla Ruder Juhl. Mass Calling with the service for Michael Fuchs. Short service, fall on the net from Calling. Free to go for uh, the Germans for the equalizer. I don't believe Birgit Michels can serve three times, three times in a row without <laughs> the Danish winning one of the points. Second round here at Yonex Denmark Open. They beat Michael Fuchs, Birgit Mitchells, 21, 18, 18, 17, 21, and 21, 17 in the first round here at uh, Odense in Odense Sports Park. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit impressed by those two uh, Danes. Uh, Stan, what do you think? Yeah, it was a match that actually uh, went the way I imagined it, it might go. Um, close match. A lot of tension, a lot of uh, good things in the service situation, but also a lot of mistakes, and um, and the Danes win it. Um, they have a a strong offense. They they can score the quick points. So so um, a good win, good win, a good tester for for the Danes, and and we can say already now that they have a they have a quite high level. Yeah, they're they're in, satisfied in the, with what you see. Yeah, they're in uh, top five in Europe already, so um, that's nice.